welcome to Investors Hangout. This weekly interaction to help you learn and understand savings and investment issues is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. Now, when it comes to investing, diversification, be it at a product level or geographically, is always a good thing. But in the current scenario, when the global indices are going through a rough patch, is this a time for you to get anxious or use this as an opportunity to invest some more? We'll talk about that in great detail in today's episode. Stay tuned. For Indian mutual fund investors, the understanding of international fund is primarily US funds because uh, Indian investors or Indian mutual funds were allowed to launch international fund long time ago, but they gained popularity they became popular only after these US domicile funds, the Nasdaq 100, the Dow, you know, S&P 500, FAN Plus, they were launched. Or the US, uh, you know, actively managed funds were made accessible to Indian investors. So Indian investors' understanding of international fund is they, these funds. And the reason why they are struggling is that after 40 years, uh, US is experiencing inflation. And in experiencing inflation, uh, is a is a completely unknown phenomenon for the you know whole generation so in that sense rising inflation which led to the surge in interest rates and that has been a massive uh, massive disruption for us market which has only been going up it was further dragged by the supply chain disruption because of the russian attack on ukraine that has led to you know huge disruption and led to all kind of uh, impact on supply chain, on prices, on commodity prices, and that, that has really gone haywire. So this is the primary reason, and I don't think the solution is easy, uh, you know, clearly visible, or we, and we can anticipate an answer. Technology stocks dominate those funds which are popular in India. So uh, they, they actually lost severe ground entirely because technology was seemingly overpriced, also, you know, the big impact of the interest rate changes, interest rates going up, is that uh, easy money is no longer available. And the whole technology boom, uh, a good part of it was also because of the easy money availability. So we have seen that the big decline in the technology stock is for a valid reason. Many of these technology companies, they have, they, many of them did not have a business model. Good that, you know, uh, they are being questioned right now lot more money will not be burned but you know in the process because the technology went out of favor many of the great companies many of the good companies many of the companies which have very significant competitive advantage they have also come down yeah look at alphabet you know the parent company of google it's down nearly 25 percent uh, likewise you know if, if you look at all the profit making scalable or scaled up technology businesses of recent years uh, they were at a at their all time high and they have slipped by you know nearly 30 25 to 33 percent so that has dragged the performance but that is the short term uh, let me tell you that you know it's very important Th these are very sizable companies they hold promise they are they are no longer in a stage uh, where uh, people are questioning many things about these companies and these companies are reacting to it these companies are making some changes they were on a overdrive to hire people, they were overstaffed, they were, their, their margins were coming down. And the whole advantage of technology business that, you know, it's a, it's a scalable business, it has great leverage with, without adding the additional cost of adding a new customer is not much. All those things were being questioned. So that is leading to the improvement of these companies. And these companies are real companies, the whole modern world has uh, realized that, it's appreciating it and they have a business model very much in place. And the whole world is, you know, changing much faster to embrace these companies. So I don't think there is as much to worry. You should not forget the long-term picture. The long-term picture is that the Nasdaq 100 went up by 14.45% in US dollar terms. 14.45% after this decline means in rupee terms, uh, it will be about 21-22% because uh, during this period, Indian rupee has also depreciated and uh, so if you look at this these returns 22% return or even S&P 500 nearly 11.5% return and that also adjusted for uh, rupee depreciation will be substantial so these, these are the 10 year returns last 
you know, since April they are down 25 to 35, uh, you know, 25 to 33 percent. That is definitely scary and that is disappointing. That is all the more disappointing because most investors came into these funds not very long ago. So the, the, the value has gone down soon after their investment. But uh, don't lose the full picture. Don't lose the long term picture. So the basic premise of these technology companies remains intact. Many of these companies will not only survive, they will thrive. Many of the companies will die and actually, you know, th that has always been happening. First and foremost, I would suggest that don't panic. These are real companies. I don't think these companies are going disappearing. Second is that, you know, don't buy into all kind of conspiracy theories. Uh, many of the startups, many of the companies with, without established business model, they might struggle, they might disappear, they might die. But uh, we are talking of, you know, the Indian investors' money invested in the NASDAQ 100 fund or S&P 500 or FANG Plus. The, many of these companies might struggle, but I don't think they're going to disappear. Uh, and who knows, it could be a great opportunity. So uh, my suggestion will be that uh, don't buy into conspiracy theory. These are real companies. Uh, this might also, this might, this might well be an opportunity. So stay focused on the long term. Don't get carried by it has gone down by 25 percent and, and don't try to actively time it uh, because nobody knows what will happen in a couple of weeks, couple of months. Uh, but I'm confident that many of these funds will, with hindsight, we will look back and find that, you know, it was a, it was a good, occasion, good occasion to buy. It could well be, but we will know about it only after five years from now. Uh, because before it goes up, it can well go down further. So don't try to actively time it. Make sure that you have time on your side. Make sure that you are investing in a diversified fund. In fact, Indian investors were disappointed more because after they, after they get, got excited about investment in these funds, they poured a lot of money and after that, many because of a, because of a regulation, because of a RBI's regulation which uh, prohibits these funds to a certain size, they stopped taking money. So that was disappointing. Now, once again, it is possible to invest in many of the funds. And uh, as it has been permitted, I think you should look at it as a, uh, you know, don't try to actively time it. Make sure that it is your long-term money. Make sure that substantial amount of money is not invested here. It should not be more than 25-30% of your total, total equity allocation. Nobody knows for sure, but I think they are great companies and they cannot be had anywhere else. It is possible for Indian investors to invest in foreign markets directly. The way you buy Indian stocks, go to a stockbroker, open a DMAT account and uh, transfer money from your bank and place your order. It is possible to do that and it is possible to do that in sizable quantity. Every Indian investor is eligible to invest up to two and a half lakh dollar, which is little over uh, two crore rupee. So if you, if you want to buy two crore worth of shares in any foreign companies, many of the fintechs are enabling investment in foreign markets directly in those stocks you can but make sure that you know if you have money you want to invest but uh, you want to invest in a fund which is not available look at a bunch of stocks don't try to speculate in foreign markets uh, don't try to think short term because all those rules all those rules which we believe or which are very dear to me and which i think only benefits a small investor or a long-term investor is that think long term diversify don't put all your money at one go and it is possible to invest equivalent of 2 crore rupee per person in foreign markets directly and uh, if you want to invest directly you can also buy through those brokers some of the index funds which are otherwise not available to buy directly through mutual funds but you can buy those funds of you know foreign origin through these stock brokers yourself to know all about investing abroad through these foreign brokers and buying these stocks directly, look at the edition of uh, Mutual Fund Insight. Uh, we published in May 2022 uh, a cover story which has all the dimensions, all the questions that will cross your mind about this. It is all uh, it is that 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 cover story answers them. Well, that's all we have for you in today's episode. Keep watching this space for more information, and if you like the show, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Take care. Bye for now.